The bottom line is that the brain develops from the bottom up. It starts first with primitive movements or reflexes that allow a child to suck on a bottle or roll over or crawl or walk and eventually start to talk. If there's any delays in any of that, in any of those stages, even a month delay, it's significant. We now know that it has a significant impact on the development of the child's brain. Um, this allows the child to move and interact with the environment, which is ultimately what builds the brain. And then when the, when the brain is built and coordinated, we can have cognitive and, in, and learning and we can develop appropriate school and academic and behavior. We can learn appropriately. If the foundation is informed right, then trying to do things just through academics or through behavioral modification doesn't work. So again, we see that we have all different types of assessments that we do in brain balance to look at these things and measure them accurately. We have academic tests that measure over 130 different academic skills from kindergarten through senior year in high school, which is typically the age of the children we work with. And we look at them and they all can be looked at as right brain or left brain skills. And we can measure those and we can see their development of their age. So we can see that some of the development is ahead, like this is a left brain skill word reading. This child is in fifth grade and yet he's reading at eighth grade, fifth month level, three and a half years above. We see he's also decoding at eighth grade level. We see that they're also doing... Uh, uh, he's also doing spelling at 8th grade, 5th month level. Those are all left brain skills. But right brain skills, like reading comprehension, is 5th grade. We see that uh, written expression, 3rd grade. Listening comprehension, 2nd sec grade. We see a big difference and unevenness in their skills. But when we worked on this child, after 5 months, we see that the left brain skills stayed where they are, which is what we wanted them to do because we want to restore balance and the right brain skills selectively came up. 5.8 years for reading comprehension, 8.3 years for math reasoning, a right brain skill, 3.4 for written expression, and seven years for listening comprehension. And that's how we achieve a balance and match. Our goal is very clear cut when we sit down with the parent, we analyze all of the data, not just this, but also behavioral checklists. This is a behavioral checklist that parents and teachers fill out. Anything in this column that's above 57 diagnoses a child with the worst type of ADHD. When this boy came in, he was at 89, very, very high. Three months later, the parents and the teachers filled it out. He was at 56. He no longer was diagnosed with ADHD. And this isn't unusual. We see this all the time. Uh, we look at motor skills. We look at their digestive function. We look at food sensitivities. We custom design a diet based on that. Uh, we do have outcome studies that have been done looking at what we do or the program or the way we look at it. This is one study that was published on a child with Landau-Kleffner syndrome in 2005 um, showing that we had significant change to the electrical activity in the brain and was able to balance that out as well as improvement in reading language, uh, auditory processing and academic skills. This is the largest outcome study we've done till date. We're currently working on a follow-up control study to this that will probably be out before the end of the year. But this was where we had 60 children randomly selected from two different centers. Um, and they uh, were assessed using uh, behavioral scales as well as academic testing. And uh, they were reassessed after 12 weeks. Um, what we saw that 82% of them no longer were diagnosed with ADHD after 12 weeks or three months of our program. Furthermore, we saw 60% of the children had a two grade level increase in multiple academic areas. We had 35% had a four grade level or more academic increase in multiple areas, um, which is significant. There's not been another study out there that has shown that level. Uh, we have many, many more studies coming around. So bottom line is brain balance is unique uh, for these 10 principles right here. One is that we're multimodal. We don't just work on one part of the elephant, we work on the whole elephant. And we understand that the primary problem is this imbalance, this hemispheric imbalance. But we also recognize that each child is individualized and we need to develop an individualized curriculum 
based on specific stimuli that's going to stimulate areas of the brain to grow through use and activity repetitively. It needs to be done repetitively. So we see the child in our center three times a week for an hour after school for a period of 12 weeks. Uh, we uh, put the program together based on the initial assessment. The initial <laughs> assessment we measure over 1,100 functions objectively by uh, looking at their motor and sensory uh, skills and then we look at their academic and behavioral skills. And then we have the parent, uh, we recommend a blood test so that we can look at food sensitivities and look at some other things going on in their body with vitamins and minerals. Um, we put that all together and it's progressively challenging so that each day the child is being reassessed and remeasured. And our goal is to take skills that are immature for their age and by working on them specifically each day, our goal is to take a child that has a, a skill, let's say, at a five-year-old level, but that child may actually be nine years old, and we want to work that skill until it gets to six years old and then seven years old and eight years old until it gets to nine or maybe even beyond so that all of the skills match one another. And we do that with you know, many, many skills, 50, 60 skills at the same time until we get them to match. That's why we get such dramatic change in a short period of time, but it's all quantitative. We're measuring this and capturing this data every day on the child. It's reproducible. We're getting the same results around the country in every center because it's all based on a protocol. It's a very sophisticated protocol, but it's the protocol that I developed. It took 15 years to develop, but it's a lot easier. We can have people learn it and, and be able to be trained in it and be able to carry it out very simply and very reproducibly. It's all safe because, again, we're learning centers. We're not doing anything invasive, and we know that we get long-term effectiveness when it, each child that graduates, we invite that child to come back every year for a free evaluation so that we can chart their progress and we're constantly collecting data that we're using for research and to also perfect our program. So all of those things come together. Bottom line is we want to take a brain that is underactive, <coughs> underconnective, and kind of lopsided in its activity, and by stimulating the underactive side, very specifically in that child, we develop more activity, we stimulate growth and connectivity. Once it gets there, it stays there. It doesn't go back from here to there. Once connections formed, they don't generally, we don't generally lose those connections. So, you know, our goal is to take a child and get them to be the child that they were always meant to be. Um, as I said, we work with children typically in K through 12. Um, and I know that, you know, you have questions and I want to answer those questions, but I'll just say before that, that if you're still a little bit confused, it's not unusual. Um, and you may be out there saying, well, my child sounds like they have both right and left brain deficits. Um, the answer is, is, is to get your child assessed.